Throughout galactic history, the philosophies and lives of the Jedi and Sith Orders were what dictated the balance of the galaxy. These orders were so influential and connected to vast empires that to many civilians, they were the poster children for the term force users. But the galaxy was a vast place, and in the grand scheme of things, the Jedi and the Sith were insignificant. There were countless force-sensitive civilizations, each with their own history and philosophy on the force. In today's video, we'll be looking at the Vos, a planet, species, and culture that was so different from any generic force user that it made every outsider to their world confused. Attention, Sergeant on deck! But before we start talking about the Vos and their many quirks, we need to first look at the place that shaped their beliefs. Vos, the planet. Located in the allied Tyon sector of the Outer Rim, Vos was the sort of planet you overlooked. At a surface glance, it was fairly average. Breathable atmosphere, temperate climate, and mixed biomes of forests, rocky mountains, plains, and plateaus. From orbit, it looked perfectly pleasant, but that all changed the moment you landed. With notable exceptions, Vos was not a friendly world. Its landscape was populated by large, aggressive predators that like ambushing and attacking passers-by. Most notably were the giant Varantiki, but many others like the Wing Moors, the Haranth, and the Morvors came together to make traversing the planet's surface a bit of a nightmare. But it wasn't just the fauna that was hostile on Vos. As we mentioned earlier, the planet featured many kinds of biomes. Most of these were regular old habitats, but two stood out as particularly hostile. The first were the Gormak lands that lay to the south of Vos. As their name suggested, these were rocky plains inhabited by the Gormak, whom we'll talk about more later on. The Gormak lands were a mass of huts, tents, and other more advanced defensive structures built by the Gormak. Since the Gormak were hostile to all Vos and outsiders, venturing into their territory was as good of an invitation for violence as suggesting a hut donate to charity or go on a diet. More interesting, however, was the case of the second horror region of Vos, aptly named the Nightmare Lands. It lay to the east, and for lack of a better descriptor, it was a cesspool of dark side energy. Habitats like this were prime examples of what dark side influence could do to the world. Wildlife tainted by the dark side grew monstrous and freakishly violent. The flora had been corrupted, turning into sprawling thorn branches that resembled tentacles, eventually forming the tainted forest. Even the water had been tainted. The defiled brook was a river that ran through the nightmare lands, carrying with it more dark side influence. The worst affected area, however, was in the center of the nightmare lands, surrounded by mountains. Navigating the rocky tunnels would bring you to a hidden plateau named the Dark Heart, a dark side locus so strong it drove visitors insane. It was littered with ancient ruins, some still sealed, some open, and an underground maze of tunnels. The flora and fauna was even more vicious, making it an overall unpleasant place to visit. But that was Vos in a nutshell, a planet of scenic autumn foliage with monstrous carnivores and twisted dark side horrors around every corner. It was this planet that the Vos and their sworn enemies, the Gormak, called home. Native to Vos, the Vos were a sentient humanoid species with an incredibly high rate of force sensitivity. Biologically, they were very sexually dimorphic. Male Vos had light blue skin and bright orange eyes, whereas the females had red skin and bright blue eyes. Their eyes were pupilless, and they were born with unique white markings all over their body. Regardless of gender, young Vos didn't mature sexually until marriage. When a male and female Vos married, a ceremony called the Rite of Arda was performed, during which the newlyweds underwent a physical, sexual, and developmental change, awakening them to puberty. This way, the Vos believed, the bond between husband and wife was forged in fire and strengthened. Despite sharing their name with their homeworld, the Vos were a minority on their own planet, outnumbered manyfold by the Gormak, their mortal enemies. They lived in a single city, their capital of Voska, which was located at the top of a mountain. Despite their access to modern technology, 
The Voss maintained careful balance with their environment, relying heavily on traditional craft, such as stone housing over metal. That said, the Voss also maintained smaller outposts outside their main city, but these were small-scale stations built to facilitate transportation and scouting. The only other place with a significant Voss population was the Shrine of Healing, a huge temple located to the northeast of Voskar through treacherous territory. This was where the Voss mystics lived and performed healing rituals on those who braved the pilgrimage to see them. The shrine, like the buildings in Voskar, had a very distinct style. The Voss were overall a very peaceful people, enjoying horticulture, art, and storytelling. They preferred to live in harmony with the world around them, focusing on their culture and their art, but they weren't given much choice. More on that in a moment. As you would expect from a population with a lot of Force sensitives, the Voss had a culture heavily influenced by the Force. At the top of Voss society was the Council of Three, made up by respected elders. But they weren't free to simply make decisions. Decisions, in fact, began as a vision. Voss mystics, who were gifted Voss Force sensitives, meditated at the Shrine of Healing or the Tower of Prophecy within the capital until they had a Force vision. That vision was passed on to the interpreters, a group of Voss that were charged with understanding the meaning of the vision. Once the meaning became clear, the Council of Three would decide on the course of action to address the vision, and this decision was respected by all. Important to note is that under no circumstances were mystics allowed to interpret their own visions. The process was broken down into very distinct steps, since it was believed each step required expertise. That is because visions were never wrong and served the greater good at all times. Even if they brought great suffering in the short term, it was believed that this was to prevent even greater suffering in the future. Such an example was when a vision led to a bloody civil war and a mass starvation, but was still hailed as correct, as it prevented something even worse. Whether or not these were just assurances the Voss told themselves, we will leave it up to you. In order to become a mystic, a Voss had to train for years and undergo grueling trials. Once achieving the rank, however, they would spend their days meditating, learning, and developing the Voss healing rituals. Mystics could even access the spirit world because of how connected they were to the Force and their homeworld. Through the spirit world, they could manifest their spirits in distant places or even speak to the living after death. Some mystics practiced the art of dream walking, but were considered outcasts for it by their brothers. If you weren't a mystic but still wanted to dedicate yourself to serving your people, you could become a Voss Commando. Commandos were stationed around Voskar and the Shrine of Healing and made up the Voss's security force slash army. Every adult Voss had to serve a mandatory term as a commando, but once their term was up, they had the choice of returning to civilian life or remaining in the military. They received reconnaissance and martial arts training. This ensured all Voss citizens could protect themselves and understood the sacrifice required to keep them all safe. So, why was a peaceful people so obsessed with defense and security? Well, it's time to talk about the other sentient race on Voss, the Gormak. The Gormak were sentients with green skin, flat faces, and frills on top of their heads that swept away from their eyes, which could be anything from red, orange, or blue. They had clawed hands and were overall powerfully built. They too had sexual dimorphism, with the females being slightly smaller and with no wall above their noses. Gormak were naturally gifted with technology and spent a great deal of effort into becoming starbound. They were also, to put it nicely, savage. Their culture was one of warfare and violence, with extreme hostility towards any non-Gormak. The Voss and Gormak were as alike as pedigree cats and rabid dogs, and they got along just as well. You see, once upon a very long time ago, there were just the Gormak. At some point after the Second Great Schism, the Sith found Voss and began harvesting the world. They ignored the Gormak, whom they thought primitive and savage. However, the Jedi followed the Sith, aiming to fight them off the planet. They sought allies among the locals and turned to the Gormak. They trained some of their sensitive tribes in the Force, and these Gormak would go on to evolve 
into the Voss. In essence, the Voss were descended from the Gormak, their ancient enemies, and had shrugged off their violent ways under the influence of the Jedi. The two sentients never got along. They fought constantly, but the Voss were never trying to win. They had received a vision that forbade it. In the words of Jadak II, the last Gormak must not die. There was no discussion. The interpretation was clear. If every Gormak dies, every Voss dies. This is true. Wage war, but do not win. Survive, for total victory is death. But the eternal war with the Gormak weren't the Voss's only problem. The Sith presence on Voss led to the dark side manifestation taking shape in a sentient evil entity that came to be known as Sel Makor. This entity resided in a Sith structure in the Dark Heart, which you'll remember as the rotten heart of the Nightmare Land Onion. If that weren't enough, in the years after the Great Galactic War and the Cold War, Voss was contested by both the Jedi and the Sith, and later ravaged by the Eternal Empire. The planet and Voskar were carpet bombed, invaded, and occupied, along with much, much more. But that's a story for another day. What do you think? Had you ever heard of the Voss and their peculiar homeworld before? Do you want to hear about how the renegade Sith, Darth Malgus, tried to get them to join his new empire? Let us know if you're interested in the comment section below.